Like a math bringing back the mid to late nineties. Like a math bringing back X Files and Welcome back, everybody. Here we are at uh, Mike and Matt's X-Files CCG again. Uh, got another great interview. Got Brandon Beiser with us today. Um, you may know him uh, from a couple of things, more than a couple of things, really. Yeah, long list. Um, for the sake of our show, he was uh, Agent Danny Pendrel. Wait, wait. Agent Pendrel. Agent Pendrel. We don't know. We don't know the first, name. The first yeah. name for sure. Uh, on the X-Files, uh, he lent his voice to Homeworld Cataclysm. Uh, which is a, 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 a great game. Uh, and he's in an episode of Stargate SG-1, one of Matt's episode, favorite episodes of Fringe, mm -hmm. uh, Star Trek Discovery, and a whole litany of other projects. So yeah. welcome to the program, Mr. Brendan. How are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you. I, I, uh, I like the use of the word litany. Oh, yeah, it's a good word. That was a that was a word of the day calendar that I got. I was going to say, I felt, you haven't used that all day. I felt smart in saving that up. <laughs> I have. <laughs> and you pronounced my name correctly. So, yeah, we practiced a few times. Yeah. <laughs> so. So obviously you were Agent Pendrel in the X-Files. Mm -hmm. What we want to know, though, is did you realize that there was even an X-Files collectible card game at all? Like, was that even on your radar or is this the first time you're hearing about it? uh is the collectible card game what i'm looking at right now is that, that, is that yeah what yeah saying? these cards here mm -hmm. yeah this is actually uh your your agent card yeah yeah i think um i think i was sent some of those to to sign is that does that make sense are some of them oh, yeah. uh yeah we're we're gonna be yeah we're gonna be sending uh you and uh and, and chris actually chris owens uh some cards to sign we appreciate that thank you very much um and well we're well, we have a second shout out to our sponsor. So yes. your card is very hard to find, mm. uh, believe it or not. Um, in fact, we've had a couple of the fans send in their own personal cards to hopefully send to you to get signed because we just don't have very many. Yeah. But our sponsor was able to actually send us uh, a few as well. So shout right. out to, uh, yeah, shout out to X-File CCG on eBay because uh, uh, we just did not have any. They're really yeah. hard, really hard to come across. So. Yeah, we have we have all these boxes of cards and we're looking through. We're like, oh yeah, we'll have a stack of them. We're like, seriously, we have to pull them from our decks to be able to use them? Yeah, so, literally, I think we yeah. had three total. Yeah so which so, i mean it's good you're you actually have a very effective playable card a yeah. lot of the cards you you have them but you never do anything with them uh -huh. your, your aging cards are actually really good yeah i, I my, my mother will be proud I, I mean yeah you can add that into your your notes <laughs> well we'll we're gonna we're gonna send you some uh not just to, to sign but also to to keep for yourself because uh, we, we learned in one of our other interviews uh, that uh, with David Lewis that you're able to just kind of flash one of those at a bar and just be like, here you go, you know, and it you know, seems to work. So you've interviewed David Lewis. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. That's funny. OK. Oh, wait. Do you have any stories? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I assume we're talking about the same David Lewis. Yeah. Uh, he played you... Agent Kresge on X-Files. Red hair. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, he's a good friend of mine. Um, uh, that's funny. No, he never, he didn't tell me he did, he did this. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know he had a card. So there's Oh, that. really? Yeah, he has a card. Oh, yeah. He was, um, <laughs> so basically, David, so David Lewis played Agent Kresge. And when Mike and I started this show, mm -hmm. he was the one person we're like, you know, we're going to start the show. And we want to try to interview actors that were cards. And he's the one person we're like, that would be awesome to be able to do an interview with him hmm. because his card is so common, common and honestly, not, and not effective literally at all. You get a box of, you get a full box of boosters and you're looking through and you're like another Kresge, another Kresge. You're like, seriously, that's his card. So <laughs> can't wait on that. Yeah. He <laughs> oh, he's, knows, he's yeah. aware. Yeah. He's aware. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so Kind of a, an, an interesting question I had for you. So as an agent on the X-Files, uh, you were killed off in the series like so many other memorable characters. Um, what's the best Hollywood death that you were involved in, X-Files or otherwise? My own or somebody else's? Either either way, yeah. whatever whatever you can think of. What's the best the best Hollywood death? Because the reason we... It's funny that you know David, because I don't know if you saw his death in Child's Play. Uh, I did not. 
Yeah, he gets he gets literally run over by Chucky <laughs> with a, a lawnmower and he cuts off his face and then he attaches it to a pumpkin. That was a watermelon. It was a watermelon? Yeah. It's just so bad. So bad. But uh, he it was pretty good. Yeah. I think, um, well, the death on the X-Files was pretty good because, I don't know if, if you remember it, but they're, you know, he get I get shot. And then at some point they do an insert or a close-up of my chest and they show the bullet wound. What happened was, so they, you know, we shot all that, but what they, I guess, had forgotten to do was get that insert shot of my chest. And they tried to double it with, um, like, wig, basically put hair on an extra or a background performer and do it that way. But they called me up and said, listen, your chest is so hairy that we actually need your chest because it doesn't match. Uh, the extra, is just, it just doesn't look real. So would you mind coming back in? And, and just having us take an insert shot, literally, of your chest. Uh, and I thought that was uh, pretty funny, actually. And so that that um, that was a memorable death, actually, for that reason. And uh, it was actually uh, here's a piece of trivia for you that that day that I got shot, uh, uh, it was the first date that Duchovny went on with Taya Leone. So he always told me that he remembered that, too, for that, uh, for that reason. So there you wow. are. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So do they do they bring you in for an extended period of time for insert shots or does that happen very often where you get called back? I just got I don't know I just got called back second unit. Uh, they came in they literally <laughs> made up my chest and you know the whole thing probably took I don't know half an hour maybe and uh, shot it and and that was that. It was uh, it was pretty funny. That's is that what you call a Screen Actors Guild minimum? Like you probably. Got to... <laughs> Call it something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like you're in a powerful position. You're like, you know, you need my chest. Like no one else can do this job. That's right. That's right. My trailer, or my chest needs a trailer. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. You can probably do that one time before you get on some list though. Yeah, I <laughs> so what I really want to know is yes. you, were, you were a voice actor for an X-Files video game. Yes. I guess. And yeah, I was wondering, is it something memorable? Like, how does it compare to being a, a screen actor? You mean doing voiceover versus on camera? Yeah. Well, the beauty of, of voiceover, I do uh, commercials and, and uh, well, video games and that sort of thing as well, is you don't have to remember any lines. You just get a music stand. It's right there in front of you. You can show up looking like however you want, showered, not showered. Uh, it doesn't matter. They just want this sound. So it's, um, I like it. It's great. It's, uh, it's a different skill. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a different kind of fun. They're both fun. Um, but it's, it's a different, uh, yeah, it's a different, a different skill, but I really which, like that. Just which, them. uh, which craft services is better though? Oh, Ooh. yeah. Good question. Good question. On set. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that Do they oh. give you craft services for most of the voice work or no? There's uh, usually uh, something you can grab, uh, not to the extent that you can on camera. You know, there's usually pop or juice or depends if you're if you're there over lunch, then they order in lunch. So that's good. Um, but yeah, they usually they usually take pretty good care of you. Uh, it depends on the studio also. Different studios do it differently. Um, but you know, they, you know, when you're working, you're, you're pretty well taken care of, I'd say. How is it? So the voice work, I don't know if you remember the X-Files video game. I just saw it on the list of voice work you've done. Yeah, I, I don't, to be honest with you. Is it, so just overall the voice work you do, is it usually in the same room? Like, are you with the other actor? Or are you just going off a recording or how's that work usually? Uh, well, if it's like a commercial and that's a two-hander, usually you're, you're there with the other person because you can act off with each other um but if you are uh, say you're the announcer then no you probably just do that alone uh by yourself in the room um it just depends on on the spot on the commercial say but for cartoons yeah uh, at least the ones that i've done i've done with uh well the, the whole cast 
in there. Except I did a, a show called Mary Kate and Olsen. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen in action. That was the the Olsen twins. Okay, girls, pick a number between one and five. Two, three. Five. Yes. And uh, I was in Vancouver, the rest of us were in Vancouver, and they were in L.A., so we, they recorded their stuff separately. I never actually saw or heard them. Um, but the secondary cast, we were all in Vancouver, and we would uh, do our stuff together in the same room. Oh. So do you remember, speaking of voice acting, do you remember the game, the, the voice work you did for Homeworld Cataclysm at all? I don't. Yeah. I don't. You know what's crazy is 20 five years later or whatever since that came out i i, I figured because i played the game back in the day and i figured you know what it'd be kind of fun to play it again let's see if i can you know hear this guy regret we regret the loss of the whole sand cursed galaxy stop murdering us and help us kill the beast <laughs> what's the most memorable voice work you've done because i mean obviously it's one of those things where you're not on set with all the other people performing live or whatever so yeah um well it depends i had a, a there's a like a cable and internet and used to be video provider up here called rogers and i used to be their voice so that was um that was great because i got to do what well, working pretty steadily doing their uh, doing all of their stuff and, uh, and then after a while, they'd let me just sort of, you know, improvise things, rewrite sort of stuff. And um, that was pretty, uh, that was a pretty sweet. It was a very sweet job, actually. Uh, that was good. And like I said, the, the uh, Mary Kate and Ashley in action, that was, uh, I was playing a Scotty dog. So I, had a, well, I was supposed to have a Scottish accent, but it was probably more sort of international. Um, but that was fun. Um, those, those two really, those two stand out uh, for sure. Um, but you know, anytime you get to work, I, I, I just like that in general. Uh, that's fair, <laughs> right? That's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, so the one that I came across. Oh, Matt, show me this I came today. across this I didn't yesterday. see it. It was great. You were the face of the LifeWise Insurance Boringly Good Guy. Oh, yeah, that was great. That was a good one too. Okay. Yeah. The dance, you remember the dance you did? That was great. Hello, I work for LifeWise Healthline of Washington. We aren't a glamorous group, we're boring. Boringly good. It's what people want in a health plan. Dependable coverage, great service, and support for your health. Very sensible, but it's not exciting. So we hired them to make it exciting. Is it exciting yet? job came about i recorded something in my closet i didn't have a proper studio set up at the time so i just literally recorded an audition it was out of seattle uh out of my closet and booked it and initially it was just you know uh radio stuff and then it blossomed into this whole huge campaign and uh in fact i think that uh guy appeared on the what's your um uh where the trailblazers play Portland. Yeah, but yeah, where was it in the Rose Garden? Uh, it's no longer the Rose Garden. It's now the Moda Center, but yes, yes. Oh, all right, well, back in the day, it was the Rose Garden. I yeah, yeah. There was actually a picture of that campaign up on the clock above, like, the video screen. I guess. Oh, yeah. Garden. Yeah, somebody sent me a picture of that, which I thought that was, that was pretty cool. Yes, that was a great campaign. That was fun. That was really fun. <laughs> yeah. I just, I wanted to know... I want to know if the dance was improvised because it's really good. Like it's hilarious. <laughs> it's great. I think the I think what I did was, but that dance team that they had had been on like America's Got Talent or something like that, something like that, and they were out of Seattle, so they were the real deal. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure mine was improvised because I have no rhythm. So there's no <laughs> that's, why, that's how I dance too. That's so I was like, I get that. That's how I am too. <laughs> Like the Steve Martin thing from the jerk when he like first learns to, what rhythm is, you know? <laughs> right. All right. So 
I did want to ask you, Brennan, there's a, there's a show that I guess you had started called in conversation with Brendan Beiser. Yeah. Is that out or is that something you're still working to like put out to, uh, that's something, well, there's uh, snippets of it on YouTube when I was doing it back in Vancouver. Um, and pre pandemic, we were doing it, um, live, which is, um, my preferred format in front of an audience. Um, and then we had it, uh, we had the audio from that. And then I guess once we start coming out of, once things start to fully open up and people get comfortable, probably start it again. Um, but that's how, uh, yeah, that's, that's the history of that show. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't, I'd seen it. I wasn't sure if it was something you're still working on, but it was, what, what yeah. does it cover usually? Is it just people in the entertainment industry or is it? Well, it started out with people Well, in Vancouver, it was that. And then I, um, my feeling is that anyone's interesting and everyone is, you just have to figure out what it is about them that is interesting. So yes, it did start out with people in the entertainment industry or the film industry as a whole. And then, uh, but then I talked to like a rabbi, I talked to like a professional poker player, talked to a guy with like one leg. And this was, um, that was, uh, that was our first live recorded show, actually. I think that one's on YouTube somewhere. Um, and so now the incarnation, since I've lived in Toronto, moved here about 10 years ago, it also has been with people starting out in the entertainment industry to create a following. And then the idea is to branch out and talk to, you know, the guy who's been driving the streetcar for 25 years. I'm like, what's that like? You know, what have you seen? Uh, you know, what have you experienced? Um, so it, it will eventually, uh, again, branch out into just regular folk as well as, you know, people that you may or may not have heard of. So do you have any other projects that you'd like people to know about? Anything crazy coming up or? There's a show I'm working on now called Pretty Hard Cases, which is uh, filmed here. It's... Um, the lead is this woman by the name of Meredith McNeil. And if you haven't um, seen the Baroness Von Sketch show, I highly recommend you Google that. It's, have you ever heard of the kids in the hall? Oh, God. Of course we've heard of the kids in the oh, hall. Oh, my God. Yes. Sausages! Sausages! <laughs> Baroness Von Sketch is kind of a female version of that. Oh. And she was one of the um, leads of that. Now she's doing this show. Um, so I'm working on that show. This is, uh, it's its third, this is season three. I started it on it last season and this season, uh, my character is becoming more evolved. So it's a show I think worth checking out. It's, um, it's pretty funny. Uh, and, uh, it's sort of a buddy cop show between two female cops. Um, and it's, uh, it's good. It's good. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. But check out Baroness Von Sketch. You definitely like yeah. all you'll like baroness von sketch i'm sure i actually um i saw that you were still doing that show like i was looking at your um uh, imdb yeah so i started watching the first episode yeah but um i i couldn't tell like how far in your character was in the first episode i didn't have time to watch Fair enough. Season two. Episode. it's actually it's a good show though i mean it had like a very like brooklyn 99 yeah exactly kind of humor but it i don't yeah. know is it a local like, is it only in Canada? Is that where they do all the filming? Yeah, it's shot in in and around Toronto, and they talk about Toronto streets and Toronto areas and Ontario places. So it's, uh, yeah, but it is sort of Brooklyn Nine-Nine light, is what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it yeah. was a solid, like, it was funny. I was like, this is good. Yeah. I, just, I couldn't figure out, like, how far along your character was, and sure. I was trying to track through. So. Two. You'd have to go all the way through season one and then season two, but watch. Okay. Season two is good, but season three is going to be even better. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, sir, for taking some time to, to hang out with us. Late. Oh, I guess we won't know that because it's going to be edited anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that too. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, again, Brendan, thank you for taking some time to talk with us, and uh, you know, we we look forward to seeing more of your work. And uh, all right, uh, audience, audience, <laughs> listener. Uh, uh, goodbye. And, uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, Brendan.